Well, hey there, guys. Greetings and salutations. Welcome back to the channel here for Open Mic. Open Mic is exactly that. We've got a big open mic for you guys to come up and talk about your <laughs> topics and questions that you guys want us to discuss. What? What'd I say? <laughs> I'm sorry. Are you still thinking about Punter? <laughs> no, nothing. We'll tell you after. <laughs> what is, what is no, happening? No, no, you didn't really catch what you said. No, what did I just say? <laughs> well, you'll watch it after. Just watch it after. There was a watch euphemism there. There was a euphemism. Yeah, I okay. totally missed it. There was a All euphemism. Right. <laughs> well, anyway, guys. Well, fuck. Now I'm totally thrown off. <laughs> I'm sorry. We're now sorry. we might as well just cancel the whole we're damn not, thing. We're live, baby. I, 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 yeah, this is why live sucks. I'm totally <laughs> now thrown off. I'm a train off the rails now. Totally <laughs> lost my flow. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> just... <laughs> All right. You'll get it later. You'll guys, get it later. we are here to talk about the things you want to talk about. So if you have a question for the Show. There's two different ways you can send in a question or a comment. If you're not watching live, you can send in a question anytime 24 7 to our tip line that's simply at streamelements.com slash John Campia slash tip. Again, you can send that in anytime 24 7. Or if you are watching live, we right now have the super chats open and you can send in a question live now that you're here. And we'll get to any of those that we deem appropriate to be used on the show. We'll get to those here in just a second. Now, before we get into the questions part of the show, though, um, you know, a topic kind of came up earlier, and uh, it, let's throw up a spoiler warning, Jonathan. All right. Uh, this is something that was from a, a, a story earlier today. If you don't want to hear, I, I guarantee you it is a minor spoiler. Yeah. But if you don't want to hear this minor spoiler, go ahead and mute your computer right now until the spoiler warning is done. It's about a cameo that's happening in, in The Flash that we talked about on the channel earlier today. You've been warned. Okay, so once the spoiler warning comes down, you can unmute your thing. So... It came out a little bit earlier that uh, the director of the new Flash movie, Andy Muschietti, publicly made it known that Nick Cage appears in a cameo in Flash as Superman. Now, it is a very, very, very minor cameo. Super minor cameo. I get it. Super minor cameo. <laughs> a super minor cameo. Super minor, baby. Um, I will even let you know there is no dialogue. There's no line spoken, nothing like that. It is a very, very quick uh, minor thing. Now, it started kind of a discussion uh, through the chat sections about, you know, well, I wish he didn't say that and I wish he didn't let us know and blah, 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 blah. And I remember thinking to myself, well, on the one hand, 75% of the people who go to the movie aren't going to understand the cameo anyway, because 75% of the movie going on is, has no idea that Nick Cage was going to play Superman in a Tim Burton Superman movie decades ago. And, and for those who do, it really won't make much of a difference. And it brought up the question for me again, when a cameo gets spoiled, like I'm talking minor, like a, a quick little cameo, when a cameo gets revealed before the movie comes out, does that actually, as some people have been saying, ruin the movie? And I'll give you a good example of this. Black Adam was out a while ago. Uh, did I mention it didn't even make $400 million? Yeah, yeah. Me. So Black Adam was out a while ago, and they, The Rock basically announced before the movie came out that Henry Cavill makes an appearance in the post credit scene, right? Of course, that's very exciting to me because I'm a big Henry Cavill guy. So I'm in Black Adam, and the post credit scene came, and sure enough, Henry Cavill shows up on screen. Now, I can only speak for myself, but for me personally, I it did not take away one slightest ounce of my excitement when Henry Cavill came on screen, the fact that I already knew. I knew, like, would there have been a bit more surprise? Well, sure. But was my overall experience with Henry Cavill coming out at the end of Black Adam diminished in any way because I knew he was coming out? In actuality, it didn't. Didn't take anything away from it for me. Uh, let's go back a little bit further to Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness. You know, a lot of people knew that John Krasinski was going to pop up in that movie as... Um, as uh, Mr. Mr. Fantastic, yeah. as Reed Richards. And so we did. I, mean, I knew going in that he was going to pop up in it. And so when he came out on screen as Reed Richards, did I go, 
huh, turns out this doesn't excite me at all because I already knew he was going to be there. Actually, for me, and I'm only speaking from my experience, not yours, I'm speaking from my own experience. For me, it didn't take away anything. I mean, maybe a bit of my, oh, like the surprise wasn't there, but it didn't take anything away. Like, not in the least. And so it makes me wonder, I've kind of half brought up this question once before, does this finding out about a quick cameo that really in no way affects the movie, like Henry Cavill popping up at the end of Black Adam had no impact on the movie. Mm-hmm. The The Nicolas Cage cameo in Flash, I, I promise you, has no impact on the movie. Uh, right. my, okay, here's my most recent experience with uh, being surprised by cameo. The Black Adam one with Superman, I knew about. Right. And the uh, Gal Gadot with in Shazam right. that I didn't know about for some reason. I, it just flew over my head. I was excited when both um, things happened, but audibly you can hear me in the theater go <gasps> like when Ga- 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 right. yeah because that's surprise yeah. but the feeling was still the same and i talked a lot more after the movie about the gal Godot because i did you know did you know about that did you then i did about the henry cavill thing that's the only difference because well, you had already had the chance yeah, to talk yeah. about the henry cavill yeah, yeah thing. but the feelings was just uh the feeling was the same it's just audibly you could tell like you could hear the sounds of people who didn't know when we watched the flash there was a lady next to me when she saw N- Nicolas Cage. I could hear her go <gasps> like that. I audibly, you could hear her. I might have been me. And that was me too. So like I imagine that part may be gone, but the feeling is still great when you see something that you never thought you'd see or you wanted to see on screen appear like to be reality, become reality. So I don't know. Yeah, I guess I, I stretch it out a little bit too. It's like, okay, let's say it's not a cameo. I went into Top Gun Maverick knowing that Tom Cruise was coming into the movie to play Maverick again. <laughs> Are, well, is anything ruined for me because I knew Tom Cruise was playing Maverick? <laughs> no. No, it was not. I, I knew, I, again, that's just my experience. Like that that one brief moment of going, oh, I mean, yeah, that's the difference, but it, it honestly doesn't take away any of my excitement, any of the thrill of having that cameo there. And I, again, I didn't know about the Nicolas Cage one until we saw the movie. But I honestly, while it was great, it wasn't any better of an experience for me than seeing Henry Cavill come on screen when I already knew Henry Cavill was going to be there. What was the audience reaction to that? You could tell that there were still a lot of people in the audience that had no idea. Yeah, had no idea. Cage they, were like, they were probably like, wait, is James Gunn casting him as Superman? Yeah, no, there was a bunch of people. That you could tell there were people in the audience who knew, right? Who knew that Nicolas Cage was supposed to be Superman at one point decades mm-hmm. ago. And they were excited. But there was also a lot of people of like, wait, what? what's happening? Why, why is Nicolas Cage Superman? Yeah, like, there was a lot thing. of probably reaction of, oh, Henry Cavill's going to make a cameo. Maybe a lot of people thought that Superman, and when they saw what sure. the, the yeah. Superman they chose, maybe that was the big surprise. I'm telling you this. The director let this out of the bag because you know what? It doesn't change the movie. The movie, at it all. doesn't affect in, the movie the at least. all. This will be the la- probably the smallest thing you'll remember about this great film. I'm telling you, I cannot wait till everyone sees this movie. I want to talk about it. I want to talk about it soon. And I look, it's May 24th. It's almost a month still until this thing comes less, out. Less, less than a month, just a June, little over. Yeah, but weeks. still, that's it's more towards the later yeah, end it's, than the, it's still the front a while. End. But you know what? Between now and then, we got. I'm, I'm heading out of here as soon as we're done this show. I'm heading out to go see Little Mermaid. We got uh, Spider Man Across the Spider Verse next week. Oh, we, that's next week. I believe it's next. I think it is. You double check that for me. The release date, but I think it's the following. Well, week. Little Mermaid. No, uh, no, that's no, tonight. No. Spider Man. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, tonight's yeah, yeah. Little Mermaid and whatever. So, yeah. yeah I'm, seeing, I'm seeing, yeah, across the Spider Verse on the 5th. So it comes out 4th, 3rd, the 2nd. Yeah. First Yeah. Second. So, yeah. Next, yeah. Next week. So, oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. I didn't know that. I Very thought... excited about that. Okay. All right. We can take down the spoiler oh, man. thing. So, uh, yeah. There June we go. June 2nd. Yeah. All right. Now let's get to what we are really here to do, ladies and gentlemen. That is to take your questions. So, Jonathan, what do we got? All right, first off, we've got a question here from Scott Brown. Uh, actually, it's more of a statement. My son loves the fast movies. I tolerate them, but I'm bored with the, <laughs> But I'm bored with Dom. He just stands there flexing as hard as he can to make it look like he has muscles. And there's no stakes <laughs> and there's no stakes with this character or development. Oh, I wish they would move on to other characters. I mean, he kind of does too. Look, I That was just like this right there, Vin. Here here's the thing. <laughs> I am 
everybody know, I'm I'm a big 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 fan of of uh, Vin Diesel. I I love the guy. I think he's great. Um the the one criticism I've always had about Dominic Toretto and Vin Diesel when it comes to Dominic Toretto is that Vin Diesel insists on making Dominic Toretto. I mean, Dominic Toretto is the ultimate Mary Sue, right? Like he is absolutely morally perfect. His judgment is never wrong. And physically he can do things that really only Superman should be able to do. Um, and, and despite all that, like they make it, especially when you get into facts that fast X, they make it that, that everybody around the world loves Dom. But when you watch the movies, like how, why would anybody like, he never talks. And when he does, it's only in quick, short, you know, cliches <laughs> like it's, and yet he is the most charismatic, most beloved. Everybody loves Dom. Um, yeah, I mean, listen, I, I'm a big fan of the Fast and Furious movies. Not a huge fan of Fast X. Hated Fast 9, but loved 8, 7, 6, 5, even really liked 4. And I love Vin Diesel. But yeah, I mean, Dominic Toretto is the ultimate Mary Sue. And and it, it does get a... It's it's a little frustrating. Wish they did a little bit something more interesting with him. Anyway, what's next? All right. Uh, we've got... Uh, Jesse has a turtle who writes, which is better, a movie that's good but a little disappointing because it could have been better or a movie so bad that it's kind of fun? A movie that's good but could have been better. Yep, always. As long as the movie's good, that's... I, I at the end of the day, you'll hear me as much as anybody else say, oh, I was a little dis disappointed just because my hype level was so high or something like that. But at the end of the day, if it's good, it's good. And I will always take a good movie regardless of whether or not it lived up to its full potential or not, I will always take a good movie over a not good movie. So, I mean, look, and I enjoy a guilty pleasure movie as much as anybody. We were just talking about, you know, Vanilla Ice is cool as ice mm -hmm. a little bit earlier today. Um, Armageddon, Tremors. I mean, I got a number of movies that I really like like that, but... Employee of the Month for me. Is that the Dane Cook and uh, Dane Cook movie? I love that movie. I don't care what any of y'all say. Really? I love Employee. Employee Every time it's on, month. I watch it all the way through, no matter what part is on. I hate to say, it, I don't know if anyone's seen this gold mine. <laughs> Who was the love interest? In it that? was uh, Jessica or Je Beale? No, the 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 singer that was with uh, the ninety five degrees. What's his name? They were married a long time oh, ago. Oh, and she was Daisy Duke. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, Jessica. What? What's her name? Je uh, Simpson? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah Simpson? Yeah, Jessica yeah, really? Simpson. Jennifer Simpson. Jessica Simpson. Jessica I forgot Simpson. about her. Right. That's right. She was Daisy Duke in the Duke's Yeah, Avengers. yeah, yeah. That's right. yeah. That movie's good. You didn't like it? Let's put the, I, I, I saw it once. I don't think I ever went back to watch it again. <laughs> Come on. If anyone in the chat likes Employee of the Month, just type one. Please. <laughs> type, type one, one I'll, please. I'll tell you what, though. When I do think of Dane Cook, he was in one really good movie. And it was a movie with Kevin Costner. It was called Mr. Brooks. Oh, it was kind it of was like Dexter before mm. Dexter ever came out. It's a really, actually, it's so good. I thought that movie should have been nominated for Best Picture. It was called Mr. Brooks. You got a bunch of people typing ones and twos in the live chat. <laughs> um, but Mr. Brooks. The month and, and Dane Cook was actually pretty good in it. Um, it's, it's my favorite movie that he's been in. All right. What's next? <laughs> Bobby Jackson writes, Hi, John. I've heard Ray mention that he's never seen a Superman fan. Uh, because he's too uh, overpowered. overpowered. That's fair, but uh, then why does he like Sentry, uh, who is also overpowered? That's a very good yeah, question. Yeah, right. You know what? Explaining he's dead. He died in the comics, so he's he's not immortal. Superman died in the comics, but too. He's, you know, he, he maybe it's because he's blonde? I don't know. <laughs> All I know is because all I know blonde. all I know is, is that why you like employee of the okay, month. Okay, okay, blonde, okay. Let me explain my including Dak Shepard. Superman is the <laughs> oh, Dak Shepard was in that. Yeah. Su Superman is my overpowered hate guy in DC. Hulk is my overpowered hate guy in Marvel. You that, don't like Hulk? I think Hulk kicks everyone's ass. To be honest, well, and him and Sentry fought to every, a draw. I know, but eventually, Hulk's but you still love alive. Sentry and hate Sentry's him. dead. Because Sentry yeah, has, bring Sentry I think back. it's because Sentry has like these mental problems that like stop. If he didn't have the mental whatever issues he had, he'll be overpowered like Superman too. But just for the fact that he battles within himself, it's kind of like it's more it's 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 intriguing to me. 
that someone could be their own worst enemy, like in a comic. I, I can, you know, I can buy into that. Where I can Superman buy into is that. Like all good, all I, everything's, everything's like happy, like you know. And I love that for that thing, but I don't know. I just Sentry has more problems, so I, I kind of like him. I don't right. know. I can't explain. It. Maybe you're right. Maybe I'm just being biased. <laughs> All right. What's next? Okay. Bright writes, uh, most anticipated movies coming out, Dune 2, Godzilla and Kong, Deadpool 3, Killers of the Flower Moon, and The Creator. I mean, they're all pretty good. Those all look good. I mean, we saw a pretty good size preview for The Creator when we were at CinemaCon. I watched The Creator. I'm trying to think of another one. I mean, uh, well, Spider-Man Across yeah. the Spider-Verse, I would have to add. Like, Dune and Across the Spider-Verse are my two most anticipated this year. I can't even remember when the new Godzilla versus Kong comes out. Uh, when they're fighting the even bigger monkey. I, I don't know. Uh, I can't remember when that's supposed to come out. They just put out the first little tease for it. The other, like a little announcement tease the other day. Uh, but yeah, Dune 2. I mean, Deadpool 3, obviously, but that's not coming out for a while. Um, but yeah, there's uh, Killers of the Flower Moon up there. Oppenheimer. You, you know, got to have Oppenheimer on there. Every time you mention Godzilla versus the next Godzilla versus Kong, I don't even think about that movie. I just get giddy that, come on, let's... Show me some of this uh, Apple TV series that we're, they're working on. I want to see something from that. I'm I'll really excited. I'm not looking forward to that. You're you're not. I have a it's feeling Apple though. It's going to be cheap. Mm -hmm. I think it's if Apple. Yes, but it's still for television. There's no box office to be made. So I I'm worried it's going to be a a budget version of that. So that's why I'm much more interested yeah. in the big screen version. But I, I don't know. <laughs> hey, listen, Apple TV's great. We'll, we'll see. see. We'll see. We'll see. All right. What's up? All right, Sam Fisher. Uh, Strange New Worlds has a Lower Decks crossover, which was announced a while ago, but it has another cr uh, connection. It's directed by John Frakes. Well, Jonathan Frakes, who plays uh, uh, Riker in, in Star Trek, he's actually directed, if I'm not mistaken, I think he's directed on almost every Star Trek series. Like, I know he directed on uh, Star Trek Enterprise. Uh, was that the name of the show, Enterprise? Yeah. yeah, I think it was called Enterprise. With Scott Bakula? Yeah, with Scott yeah. Bakula. Um, uh, I know Jonathan Frakes directed on that. I think he might even directed the finale. He directed a little bit on Voyager. Um, so, yeah, that connection is there, but he's directed on a lot of the series. I can't remember if he ever directed anything on Deep Space Nine. Um, but, yeah, there's that thing. I was very – listen, I really, really like Strange New Worlds. It's It's a really good show. And for them, and I don't watch Lower Decks, but I think it's absolutely fascinating that they're doing a Lower Decks, which is an animated show, crossover episode or episodes with Strange New Worlds in live action. And they're going to actually take the voice actors who do the voices of the characters in Lower Decks, and they're bringing them in as the actors in the roles. It's an interesting thing. It, you know what? It's probably going to do exactly what it's meant to do. It's probably going to get me to mm -hmm. go now and check out Lower Decks. Yeah, yeah. It's like a cross That's promotion. That's probably the whole reason they're doing it's it. It's a cross promotion right there. And it's going to work on me. It's going to work on me I'm too. Because I'm easily manipulated. Just ask your sister. <laughs> <laughs> All right, what's next? All right, let's see. We did Sam Fisher. We got Harv's K who says, rest in peace to the legend Tina Turner. She wasn't in too many movies, but was always so memorable in them, such as Tommy, Mad Max 3, and The Last Action Hero. Thunderdome! Man, I'll tell you what. Last it, Action uh, we don't need another My hero. dad loved Tina Turner, man. My dad loved Tina Turner. Who didn't love Tina Turner, yeah, man. man? I mean, I I, I was a kid when we were like, like, what's love got to do with it? Yep. And stuff like that. And of course, in, in Beyond the Thunderdome, I, I mean, look, we all knew tina turner wasn't young i mean she's in her 80s and stuff like that but i i don't know i, I it just caught me really by surprise when mm -hmm. we were recording the podcast earlier today and and jonathan as we were getting close to the end of the podcast jonathan said hey i should probably mention this i just saw it come across new newswire that tina turner passed away it's like like what You're like, really um that woman was one of the most, like, as far as on stage presence goes, I don't think, you know what? I, I, I think this is fair to say. I don't think this is hyperbole. There has never been a more charismatic, dynamic presence on stage when performing uh, than Tina Turner. She was electric yeah. when she was on stage. You know, you uh, know I, I just can't believe she's passed away. My, my dad rarely listened just because the type of music that he liked to listen to, uh, very rare that females actually um 
were uh, doing that music. But there's only two females that uh, my dad would have on the radio if they were on. One of them was Tina Turner, and get you, you, you can't guess the other one. Uh, Anne Murray, Fleetwood <laughs> Mac. Well, that's a band. I know, but but, yes, but, but it's yeah, fronted yeah. by a, a woman. Those are the only two. Well, that's probably why your sister likes to pop on Fleetwood yep. Mac every once in a while. There's only two uh, women that I would hear on the radio if I was. That's Tina Turner or Fleetwood Mac. It's crazy. Such uh, different, right? They're so different. So, all right. What's next? Okay, we've got Fangboy seventy one who writes: uh, If you thought Five Nights at Freddy's was scary, you would absolutely hate the ver the VR version of it. Oh, I bet. Uh, second VR game for it was just announced. Yeah, too. I just saw that during the PlayStation uh, presentation. They're doing a VR version of Five yeah, Nights? Uh, all I typed in the chat was nope. That's it. <laughs> no, why? Uh, why? I'll, yeah, you know what's funny? I I got a VR headset, yeah. and Beat Saber was fun. Uh, they also had a ping pong game that was pretty fun. I, mm, I, I didn't. Why did I stop? Oh, I stopped using it because you lost it. No, you lost it. No, you lost it. No, you guys couldn't did find we... it because I wanted to borrow oh, it, got, it. No, it got lost yeah, during the, the move. move. Yeah, That's right. Because you came over to buy it. <laughs> now the narrative is I lose your shit. I owe you an apology. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, then you came over to borrow it, but that's when we realized yeah. it was missing because we lost in the move. But I didn't use it a ton. Yeah, it sucks. And now it's... Apple is getting ready to announce their big VR headset. I didn't hear that. You, well, yeah, really? guess, but get this. How much did my... Oculus cost. Like, they're like three hundred bucks now. Three hundred bucks. Okay. Depending on how much, what right. the size. And it's of pretty the good. Yeah, yeah. It's pretty good. That's that's decent. You know how much this? This is the report I saw this morning. You know how much the Apple one is going to cost? The, and let's put this in perspective. The new PS5 VR is six hundred, I think. Yeah. So we're going from Oculus okay. three hundred. The new P. I think it's six hundred or six ninety nine, whatever. And right. now Apple's what? Take a guess. Take a guess. Twelve ninety nine. More. What? More. VR, VR, fifteen ninety nine. More, nineteen ninety nine. Is it really this two thousand dollars? That that's a, I mean, we haven't seen the that's the renders. That image is the renders oh, okay. they've put but, out for. It. I don't know if that's what it's actually going to be, but that's the report. So I saw two different I mean, reports. The original report said it was actually going to be three thousand dollars, and then I saw a report today saying. Actually, they're probably going to sell it for a, a much cheaper at about two thousand. Now we won't know that, until. Though. Yeah, we won't know until I don't know uh, when is the uh, the um, the event. I think it might be next weekend is the event. I think it's the third and the fourth. So that's when we'll find out for sure. But they got theirs coming. Well, I so. want to know the percentage of how much of that money is Apple branding and how much is new technology. We'll find out. Yep. We'll find out. I mean, listen, these are the same guys who put out you know, noise canceling headphones and how much were those things? Like I could buy my Bose, which I've, I've listened to the Apple ones. They're great. My Bose are every bit as good, if not better. And my Bose ones are half the price of the Apple ones. I mean, listen, I've got a MacBook right in front of me. Right. I've got a, a Mac studio in there. I've got an iPhone. Um, I, I like my Apple products. I do, but they really overcharge for their crap. Uh, and this, I think this is VR's last chance at, being mainstream right here. If Apple takes a shot and they fail, I think it's... Let's say go back all the way back to when we were still at Collider, right? Um, our boss, Mark, mm -hmm. he was like all in on virtual reality. Remember, he would bring in the gear. And, and, and I remember I've had people, it wasn't just Mark, but I've had people telling me for like seven years, VR is the new big thing. It's the new big, like in the next six months, it's going to be the biggest thing everywhere. I've been told in the next six months, VR is going to be the biggest thing everywhere for seven years. And I, I just don't think it's going to be as adopted as pe listen, if people weren't adopting it when it was 300 bucks to get one, I don't see how people on mass are going to adopt it when it's $2,000 to mm. get one. But I mean, who knows? We'll see the presentation they're going yeah. to make next weekend and maybe it'll change. Oh, oh they're, uh, they're introducing it next weekend. Apple. Apples? That's the thing. I, th oh, I think okay. July, June okay. 3rd and 4th, I think is when they're announcing Let's it. Let's check it. All right. What's next? We've got Jaden Vossi writes, what is all your guys' ideal deli sandwich? Uh, what would you put on it? Well, I mean, I know my like Subway. <laughs> my Subway mine. is probably like uh, the Italian BMT, but I add Capicola. I use pepper jack cheese instead of provolone, toasted on Italian herbs with cheese, with spinach, onion, bell pepper, avocado, <laughs> Olive oil and vinegar, and then their peppercorn ranch. I ordered the same thing: turkey, lettuce, tomato, cheese, mayonnaise, and mustard. That's it. 
All right. That's I can everything. tell you guys the ultimate sandwich. No, that's not. Mine was just, you, they just heard. <laughs> I mean, that's just Subway. <laughs> I mean, I, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so here's my, here's my ultimate sandwich. It's very, very simple. It's very, very simple. I get two uh, slices of bread. It can be like a, uh, a seven wheat or a seven grain bread, or even just straight up a nice soft white bread. I just, mm. I like soft bread mm -hmm. yeah, soft on bread. my sandwiches. I mm. like soft bread. So uh, a slice of mozzarella cheese. Okay. I, and you know what? I, I, in a pinch, even just a sliced orange American cheese. Fine. Oh, whatever. Yeah, yeah, fine. Some nice Giona salami, some turkey breast, mayo, and here's the key. A thin layer of regular potato chips. Oh, on it to give it that crunch? Give it that crunch. Oh, yeah. That, te that texture, that crunch when you bite into it. A friend of mine, I, I know a lot of other people already know about that, but a friend of mine was the first one to tell me about mm -hmm. it. And I tried it and it's like, oh yeah, I've never gone back. My mouth is watering right now. My mouth is totally watering. And so then you deep fry it. it. <laughs> and then put in some batter and deep fry that son of a bitch. <laughs> And dip it in ice cream. Yeah, I was gonna say dip it in chocolate, and then we're good. <laughs> deep fry, <laughs> deep fry that son of a bitch. Now we're talking healthy. <laughs> All right, what's next? Empire Strikes Back, Street Boys writes: F and F eleven should finally do time travel and call the movie Fast X Men: Days of Future Past. <laughs> <laughs> Even the leader is a ba is a bald dude with superpowers on wheels. Okay, look, all like dead That's serious. Funny. Joking yeah. aside for a second, after Fast Nine. It was all the rules were gone. They literally took a car into outer space and with duct tape. And the conversations about, well, what the actual F are they going to do in Fast 10? Like, like, seriously, time travel and the first car race around Mars were legitimately possibilities and on the table. One of the things that I am thankful for about Fast 10 or Fast X, whatever they want it to be called is the fact that they dialed it back a bit, right? <laughs> like the way I described it, my out of theater reaction was, I mean, it's Fast and Furious, so there's still ridiculousness in it, right? But they dialed it from Fast 9 ridiculous back to about Fast 7 ridiculous. So there's still a lot of <laughs> defying the laws of nature, science, and God uh, in the movie, but it's not as egregious as say Fast 9 did. But before seeing Fast X, I mean, seriously, is there anybody who would have bet money? Oh my God. Is there anybody who would have bet money? Wait. Against. Yeah, that, that's what they went out. This in literally. The movie? Yeah. Dude, this literally looks like space balls. <laughs> they, <laughs> before Fast X came out, let, let's go back six months. Would anybody have actually put money saying, nah, they won't do time travel in Fast X? I wouldn't have taken that bet because I wouldn't have put it past them to do time travel. I mean, I guess I still don't, but at least Fast X showed us they were trying to dial it back a bit and get, get more of the other Fast So are you movies. trying to say Fast 9 is a requirement in order to appreciate Fast X? <laughs> yes! I, Which, I, I, you know what? I'm getting that overwhelming Because Fast 9 is worse, yeah, so Fast 10... Them. Look, that, oh. I love that. <laughs> fast 10 is definitely better than Fast 9. Like, Fast X is better than Fast 9. Okay. But if I hadn't seen Fast 9, I might have disliked Fast X <laughs> even more. I mean, I don't know. Okay. All right, what's next? Okay, we've got... Um... Okay, Empire Strikes Back, Street Boys writes, I like how they release tickets to The Flash a day before the Flash TV series finale. Way to further emphasize how long this film has been waiting. Okay, so put this into context, all right? Uh, Stephen Amell, the actor who played... Uh, the Green Arrow in the Arrowverse. He had come into my studio and he he had come in to do a sit down. We were talking about, uh, you know, Green Arrow, all that kind of stuff. And it was only a couple of days after the debut of the new Flash show, which Stephen Amell was way behind. He was totally behind that show and pushing that show. So the Flash series, now in its ninth season... It just had its season one debut. And I think it was a day or two after that debut. It might have been the very next day that Warner Brothers announced the Flash movie. That's how long ago they announced the Ezra Miller Flash movie. It was nine years ago. <laughs> <laughs> it's been 84 years. That's how long ago it was. And Stephen Amell was, was very blunt 
when he was talking to me on my show, he was very blunt saying like he, he thought it was Bush League that Warner Brothers would announce the Flash movie the day after the Flash show debuts. He goes, come on, at least let the Flash show get some traction. But the point is, to put that into context, they announced the Ezra Miller Flash movie the day after the Flash TV show debuted nine years ago. And now today... It's the movie is coming out right about as the Flash series is yeah. ending its ninth se See? season. <laughs> See, they respected the Flash series. Yeah, well, yeah, I'm sure it was all done out of respect. <laughs> all totally done out They're of like, complete we respect. We got to wait on the Flash movie. <laughs> it's like, well, we can't put it out now. I mean, we got to wait a few more years. Yeah. yeah. All right. Hey, listen, guys, we still have more questions of yours to get to. But before we do, we're going to take a minute here and thank the two sponsors of today's video of John Campbell's Open Mic. The people who've given me the best sleep I've ever had at Helix and my mobile service provider, Mint Mobile. This video is sponsored by Helix Sleep. Their Memorial Day sale is running now, and it's a great time to upgrade your mattress. You can get 25% off your purchase for a limited time. Check out the Helix site for more details. Guys, Helix Sleep offers the best premium mattresses, custom fit to your needs, conveniently shipped right to your door. And in case you're not 100% sure which mattress is best for you, Helix Sleep's quiz matches you to the perfect mattress based on your body type and sleep preferences. Guys, you know Ann and I have had our Helix mattress mattress for almost a year and even when we go to Las Vegas and stay in these beautiful hotel rooms we can't wait to get home to get a great night's sleep in our Helix mattress. The mattress comes rolled up in a box and is easy to set up and there's even a hundred night sleep trial to test the mattress out to ensure that you love it. And good news Helix is having a great Memorial Day sale that goes from May 15th to June 4th. Visit helixsleep.com slash campia to get 25% off your Helix mattress plus two free pillows during their Memorial Memorial Day sale running now for a limited time. We want to thank a sponsor of this video, Mint Mobile. From the gas pump to the grocery store, your utility bills and favorite streaming services, inflation is everywhere. Seriously, make it stop. Thankfully, there's one company out there that's giving you a much needed break. It's Mint Mobile. As the first company to sell premium wireless service online only, Mint Mobile lets you order from home and save a ton with phone plans starting at just $15 a month. You guys know that ever since I switched to Mint Mobile, I've been saving almost 70% a month over my old phone plan. For people looking Looking for extra savings this year? Mint Mobile offers premium wireless for just $15 a month. By going online only and eliminating the traditional cost of retail, Mint Mobile passes the significant savings on to you. All of their plans come with unlimited talk and text plus high-speed data delivered on the nation's largest 5G network. Use your own phone with any Mint Mobile plan and keep your same phone number along with all your existing contacts. Switch to Mint Mobile and get premium wireless service starting at just $15 a month. To get your new wireless plan for just 15 bucks a month and get the plan shipped to your door for free, go to mintmobile.com slash campia. That's mintmobile.com slash campia. Cut your wireless bill to 15 bucks a month at mintmobile.com slash campia. And thank you to our friends at Helix and, of course, my mobile service provider, Mint Mobile, for sponsoring this episode of open mic. Remember guys, when you check out and support our sponsors, you're actually supporting us. So if you look down in the description of this video, you'll find links and promo codes for our sponsors. And again, thank you to Helix and Mint Mobile. All right, guys, let's get back to your questions here, shall we? Jonathan, what do we got next? Uh, uh, Stefan uh, DeLint Wooters uh, writes, I saw The Little Mermaid today and loved it. Every change they made to the song, story, especially the characters, were an improvement over the original. It's now my favorite of the Disney remakes. I'm oh. looking forward to it. I mean, it'll have a hard time beating out Cinderella and Aladdin for me. I mean, like Disney with their remakes are hit and miss. Uh, but a couple of the ones they've done really good on, I particularly like those two. So I, I'm going to see in a couple of hours, and I hope I like it as much as you did. From All right. What's next? All right. Azaz writes, strong sense that along with Guardians Volume 3, both Flash and Across the Spider-Verse will have emotional responses, great action, and great writing. I have, well, first of all, we already know that Flash does because we've seen it. <clears throat> Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse, over the last two years at CinemaCon, they showed us 15 minutes at a year ago CinemaCon and 15 more minutes of it at this past CinemaCon. And everything we've seen has been on par, if not even better, than Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. And I think that's one of the great movies. Um, I have all the confidence in the world that it's going to be up there. So listen, I, again, I said this earlier, 
I cannot remember the last time I've seen three comic book movies back to back. I mean, it used to happen all the time, but it hasn't happened in a while that we've got to see three comic book movies back to back that I can legitimately say I loved each and every one of them. And right now we're on a streak of two. Streak of two. Guardians 3, Flash, and now we'll hopefully Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse will bring it home. Mm -hmm. All right, what's next? Michael Jones writes. Uh, By the way, Michael sends in a $20 oh, super yeah. chat. Thank you, Michael, for supporting us on that level, man. We appreciate that, dude. Um, hearing movies like Asteroid City, Club Zero, and a few more also receiving five-plus-minute standing ovations, how serious do we take these now knowing Indy 5 received an eight-minute standing ovation, but the reviews were mediocre? Coming out of Cannes, uh -huh. not very seriously. Um, it, the, the audience is at the Cannes Film Festival. Actually, I remember reading a thing in uh, Deadline that said, like, like an eight-minute standing ovation, but they said it, it was a... Uh, What's the opposite of an enthusiastic, not unenthusiastic, but a mm. a lukewarm eight minute standing ovation, right? Can is it can be known for having like a twenty minute standing ovation, which I know is hard to imagine, but they they've talked about that. Uh, the audiences that can can be very extreme. They will walk out and boo because remember this is a paying audience, right? Or they will give really elaborately long standing o's. The writer in Variety though suggested that the standing o for for Indiana Jones wasn't so much for the movie, but it was for Harrison Ford. Yeah, it was that, his that, swan song. It was yeah. to honor like, him. You know when Kobe Bryant had his last season, right? And he he would play, and if he played like crap, they would still give him a standing ovation. That's the way I saw that standing ovation. More of a, let's celebrate what he's mm -hmm. he did with this whole franchise. Yeah. Now, the the reviews for Asteroid City have been quite good. Oh, yes. So, um, that but yeah, I, movie. I honestly, hearing about five, 10, 15 minute standing ovations at the Cannes Film Festival, honestly, doesn't mean that much to me. All right, what's next? Plus, Wes Anderson's very French, like cinema friendly. Mm. Oh, that's very true. Yeah. Um, so, Mike Thompson writes Is Flash better than Man of Steel? No. Yes. Oh, absolutely not. <laughs> yes, it is. Uh, but that, that will be a matter of yeah. subjective opinion, right? Like to me, Man of Steel is the best DCU movie, and and to me, it's one of the great comic book movies. That movie gets better and better every time I see it. But I am one of the biggest defenders of Man of Steel. So you can, if you ask another person who isn't that big of a fan of Man of Steel, well, they're going to say Flash is better. If you are asking me, no, it's not better than Man of Steel, but it is now. I mean, I shouldn't say this because the movie's not officially out, but let's mm. pretend it is. <laughs> and this is how it ends. Flash okay. is now my second favorite. The Flash for me bumps James Gunn's Suicide Squad out of the number two spot for my favorite DCEU movie. Um, so it's now Man of Steel, uh, Flash, James Gunn's Suicide Squad. And you guys know how much I love that movie, but it and gets bumped out for Flash. Shazam. And then the first Shazam. Mm -hmm. And then probably the first Wonder Woman movie. And then probably Batman versus Superman. Anyway, I won't go through the whole yeah, list, yeah. but but uh, no, if you're asking me, it's not better than Man of Steel, but that's a ridiculously high bar if you're asking me. <laughs> All right, what's next? Okay, Logan Hoyne writes, uh, I was critical of the podcast change, but loving it now. Thoughts on Planet of the Apes, sequel by Disney and director Wes Ball of, of the Maze Runner films? I really, since I don't, I'll be honest with you, I loved the first two new Planet of the Apes movies. I thought the third one, I'm not going to lie to you, I thought it was bad. And I thought it was the most, what not the most, but one of the most deceptive marketing campaigns ever. Almost everything in the trailers, almost every promo image, none of them were in the movie. None of it was in the movie, right? And they they made this, they made the marketing campaign around the third one as if it's it's now the, the war, it's the battle between man and ape. That That's not in the movie at all. That's never in the movie. Yeah, they show these posters and pictures of the, these apes going at these uh, humans mm -hmm. and they're charging it. That, that's not in the movie. And I actually thought the movie was pretty ho-hum compared to the first two. That sapped a lot of my enthusiasm for any future Planet of the Apes movies. So I'm not going to lie to you. I'm not excited for new Planet of the Apes. That's not to say that I'm not going to give it a shot and I may not end up loving it. Again, Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse, I didn't care about it until I saw it. Right now, I don't really care too much about the new Planet of the Apes, but that may change once I see it. Is Andy Serkis involved still? I don't believe he is, no. Oh, no. Then that was, that takes away a reason. No, me. I mean, it takes a little bit away, yeah. yeah. All right, what's next? Okay, we've got uh, James Argenta who writes, the new Spider-Man game might be 
uh, game of the year and best adaptation of a comic book with Craven, Lizard, Miles, and Black Suit Peter. Mm. Well, you saw this trailer, right? Mm. You were just talking to me about it. I haven't seen it yet. There's something about that PlayStation 5 we have in that other room that I might start using it a lot more. Because you, <laughs> you're an Xbox guy. Yeah, yeah I'm an right? Xbox guy. I'm not un unapologetically an Xbox guy. <laughs> Because but, all my friends are playing uh, Xbox. And but you're I, not one of these Xbox guys that being an Xbox guy means I hate PlayStation. Oh, never. Yeah, never yeah, with anything am I that diehard where I would try to take away from other people's enjoyment. I want to join their enjoyment. And I'm going to join their enjoyment with the Spider-Man game. You know, that's, that's it. That's the same motto that, for people who go to orgies. No, I'm just saying. It's just like the Spider-Man game looks incredible. Like um, the, the black suit in the beginning, he was doing things I've never seen in a Spider-Man game. I don't know how many controls or how many buttons it takes to do the things that they were doing, but I hope it's just one because I would get so frustrated. You know what I'm really looking forward to? What? The Wolverine game. Remember that? Remember they put out like that that Wolverine teaser like well over a year ago? That better be R. And I think it's made by the same people who make the Spider-Man <laughs> game. That better be an <sighs> R game. I'm waiting to see that one. Yeah. All right, what's next? All right, we've got Cassinima writes, uh, imagine Cocaine Bear, but set in the Star Wars universe on the moon of Endor. The Ewok, it's <laughs> Griffing... <laughs> It Criffing did spice. I don't know. And, and Ewok did spice. Oh, okay. Because because spice is kind of like a yeah. rug yeah. in the Star Wars. That's universe. a Dune reference. Right? I'm telling you, you don't need. Well, no, in Star Wars, it, like oh, like uh, Han Solo was running spice, oh, okay. right? But in the Star Wars world, you don't need to give the Ewoks any cocaine to make them lethal. They captured Luke and Han and Chewbacca and were about to burn them alive and eat their flesh. They killed a lot of stormtroopers, severed their heads, and then played their helmets like bongo drums as celebrations into the Andorian night sky. And here's the most horrific fact. Some of you have heard me say this before. Here's the most horrific fact about the Ewoks. All right. Wicket found Princess Leia and brought her back to the Ewok village. Later, Luke, Chewbacca, 3PO, Han come to the Ewok village as well. And when Leia comes out, she's dressed in some kind of, she wasn't in her uniform anymore. She's in some kind of dress, mm -hmm. right? Here's something that's going to make it so you can't sleep tonight. The Ewoks didn't make that dress. The only explanation for that dress being there was that dress belonged to some other poor unfortunate soul that the Ewoks had found cooked alive and ate. And the dress is what's left over. That's the only explanation for that dress being there. You're bumming them out, man. I mean, I mean so <laughs> I could sleep through anything, man. I can sleep through anything. Anything. We could bet on that right now. I could sleep right now if you want. <laughs> anyway, all right, what's next? All right, uh, we've got, let me make sure this was the next one. Yeah, uh, Levartov. Uh, it looks like in 2024, the MCU will be very street level focused, which excites me. I love the government on the ground side of the MCU. I mean, it's kind of needed, right? The One of the things that the MCU started making a mistake was early in the MCU, they were very good at changing gears, right? Global threat, smaller threat, global threat, smaller threat. You know, uh, the world's at stake. Then you got Ant-Man, the hero's just fighting for his family. Like, change the gears, change the stakes. But then later, as we, you know, even in Phase 3, which is great, you got later into Phase 3 and then in Phase 4, it's like every single movie was all of reality's at stake. The planet's at stake. The galaxy's at stake. The planet's at stake. Every, even Ms. Marvel. And I loved Ms. Marvel. But even Ms. Marvel, they got into that one episode where, you know, the djinn, they were trying to overwrite our reality with their own reality. So even there in Ms. Marvel, the world's at stake, right? It's going to be nice to see, get into some of these movies where hopefully they start shifting gears again to keep us as an audience member on our toes. Anyway, that's just my thought. All right, what's next? Okay, we got uh, Bloodless, Bloodless Slim. Hoping for a Superman and Wonder Woman relationship in this new reboot. I just think it works better than Lois Lane. I just want something new. I do not. I do not. It always felt weird to me when I saw it in the, I think they did it in the Batman series. Was it the Batman or animated series or was it the Justice League animated series? Mm -hmm. They I, they had a little thing, I think, in one of those things. I'll say, well, I mean, look, on the one hand, I, I do understand Wonder Woman's attraction to Superman, right? Because 
she is without peer, right? Wonder Woman is without peer. She's Wonder Woman. And Superman is the only one that can legitimately be a peer to her. I get it. So that, that kind of makes sense. But the concept of it never appeals to me. And, and I do love the classic Lois Lane relationship. Remember, part of the thing that makes Superman as a character so wonderfully interesting is the struggle to understand his place amongst humanity. Having him then hook up with just another god, to me, takes away from that. Mm -hmm. Lois Lane becomes that anchor for him in his humanity. And by the way, and one of the animated series, I can't remember which one, but they actually started having Wonder Woman and Batman. Yeah, yeah, that was a problem. To me, too. that was way more interesting. Yeah, but but see, every anytime, I just hate the problems that happen when coworkers are like, you know what I mean? It's that's what it looks like to me. I just hate the problems that come out of it. I don't need to to go through that in my DC universe. All right. What's next? All right. Terrence Fisher writes, uh, I tried Athletic Greens today and I feel great. I don't know if it's a placebo effect or not. How do you feel after taking it immediately and over time? It's hard for me. I've been, I've been using Athletic Greens for a while now. They, were, uh, they, they are no longer one of our sponsors, but I continue to use them. Mm -hmm. um, I really love Athletic Greens because I eat terribly. I, I don't like vegetables. Mm -hmm. I can eat carrot, like baby carrot sticks. I like those. <laughs> Um, and I'll have some, I'll have steamed broccoli if you put it in with some rice and chicken breast, but generally speaking, I do not eat my veggies mm. and have taking something like athletic greens is probably the only reason, way I stay alive, <laughs> but wow. I, I know it, it's great. I mean, I, I really, really love them. Yeah. I get the, the vitamins, the nutrients and stuff like that. So yeah, I, I dig it a lot. I'm glad you're using them, man. Hey, by the way, I think our promo code still works. Just use athleticgreens.com slash campia. And uh, I think we still get credit for that. Maybe. Yeah. I don't know. Honestly, I don't even know if we still do or not. All right. What's next? All right. King Daddy Goat writes, uh, it was the uh, asphalt stomp by Dom that did me in. <laughs> I heard about that. Yeah. That happened okay? I, I, okay. Oh. okay. There's just, now granted, there's no moment in Fast X like there was in Fast 9. Like there's a moment in Fast 9, and I've talked about it a lot, but still it bears repeating, where he literally pulls down this huge underground concrete structure with his arms. He grabs these chains and he literally pulls the roof down. And I'm like, you are not fucking Samson. I, it, I just, ugh. It's the sleeveless shirts. That's the solar energy <laughs> the on his power arms. The the solar energy. He's got solar arms. That's it. Explanation oh, so right there. Bad. There you go. Take that. All right. What's next? All right. Uh, Corella Entertainment writes, uh, the flow of the show is amazing, guys. I'm digging the laid back vibe. You guys seem to be laughing a lot more. Thank you, guys. <laughs> oh, thank you. Yeah. Listen, the, the, one of the nice things about switching over to podcast format, if we're talking about the podcast as opposed to the open mic right now, is it's a lot more relaxed. I mean, without the cameras and without having to have all of our, like, look, without exaggeration, every episode between the ones Jonathan and Ray and myself would all put together, every episode had 50 plus graphics and images that had to be ready to go and everything had to be structured and timed out right and all this kind of stuff. Now with the podcast, we can literally just, oh, hey, here's our top, let's just go. And we just talk and it's, I'm enjoying it. Don't get me wrong. I would love someday if somebody were to come along and give me $300,000 that I could use to hire two uh, competent, legitimate executive producers who live in the LA area to come in and take over a lot of my responsibilities and we could just go back to doing the John Campia shows, I, I would love to do it. It's just that the amount of effort it took and it's part of the reason why I'm really enjoying doing the podcast so and much. And speaking of laughing, you still don't get what you said in the intro, right? I that, can't that remember what I said in the intro, no. A a anyone who got what me and Jonathan were Just laughing, say press, it. Press one in the chat. Just please. say it. I, I can't say because I don't remember what you, you said. You have to review the tape. Then are you asking me if I remember what I said? If you don't even remember <laughs> what you said. <laughs> because it was funny. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> All right. What's next? All right. Tahir Rahim writes, uh, in what order would you rank these films? The Menu, Burnt, Chef, and Boiling Point. Very underrated Stephen Graham film. I, I don't like doing rankings, but out of all those, The Menu is the best one. Um, I, I mean, a couple of those are great. I really do like John Favreau's Chef. It's, it's a really nice little movie. But I, I, they're all great. But the menu just did was something 
was transcendent for me about the menu and the experience of it. I, it, not to mention it stars the guy I believe is the greatest actor in the world without an Oscar, Rafe Fiennes, uh, is so freaking good. And I love the ending. It's got a very Ratatouille kind of ending. Um, that, that just to me, that's my favorite one of the bunch. I love that movie so much. I All mean, right. you got to hand it to Chef. I mean, his, the acting of that make, made me convinced that he could be married. Oh, he was married to Vera, uh, to Sophia, Sophia, and Vergara, also dating right. uh, S uh, Scarlet Witch. <laughs> that's yeah, right. That's or, no, 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 not Scarlet Witch. Was Johansson. it Scarlet Johansson? Yeah, it was Scarlet Johansson. I mean, Scarlet Witch. I mean, I meant Black Widow. Yes, uh, it did convince you. And by the by the way, if you did not know, on Netflix, he then kind of spun that into a show. It's a reality show, though. Where mm -hmm. him and this and this popular celebrity chef go out and they actually and they meet up with different celebrities all the time and they do they actually cook stuff and it's a really fun show you should check it out. All right, what's next? Okay, we've got uh, Jesse has a turtle. For everyone, if you were on death row, wh okay, I got dark. Uh, what would your last meal be? I'm talking main course, sides, drinks, desserts, etc. Just a big thing of my I would say my grandmother's, but my unfortunately my grandmother passed away recently, mm. but my aunts, her daughters. My aunt, just a big slop and plate of their lasagna. Our, we have a homemade Italian lasagna that literally, my aunts make the noodles from scratch. Well, my grandmother did, but now my aunts who make it all the noodles from scratch, the whole bit, best thing I've ever ate. I wish I could say something sweet, but it has to be a Big Mac with fries. <laughs> it has to be a Big Mac with fries. All right, what's next? All right, we've got John Redcorn, opening box office predictions for Indy 5. Uh, in my opinion, 80 mil. <sighs> I might go lower. I might go around 70. I'm going 55 million. You're going that low. Whoa. Right. Uh, uh, I I like the first one. The, re the, the reviews have just been so lukewarm. It's it's, it's hard just, to say. I don't yeah. feel that 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 hype. That hype right now. I thought you were pulling a black that, eyed that, peas. That, yeah, that, they're that, getting that, all yeah, black that, eyed peas there. <laughs> that 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 boom boom ba. All right. AI, I am AI. <laughs> All right. Uh, Esteban Reyes writes, uh, listening to open mic when grading student work or at the gym is the best combo known to man. I agree. Uh, <laughs> hopefully we put like your students will hope that we put you in a good mood so you'll be generous. Otherwise, fuck those kids. Yeah. F. F. All for all of them. F's Turn across up the volume. The board. Say it again, John. Turn up the volume now. F's for all of them. <laughs> Fail their asses. Yeah. <laughs> I'm glad you're listening, listening man. Thank you. you for that. All right, what's next? All right, Christopher writes, will Disney sort out their streaming linear issues or likely the company goes under and sold off? Well, I, don't think I have no idea what you're talking about. Will Disney, it doesn't streaming have anything to do linear with issues? I don't think Disney's going to be going under anytime soon. No, Disney's not going under anytime soon at all. So I'm, I'm not quite sure what we're referring to. Yeah. All right, what's next? All right, John Redcorn. I'm looking forward to seeing RDJ in Oppenheimer. I still have the... Uh, the taste of too little in my mouth. Uh, that damn dragon fart, man, shaking my head so bad. I never saw it. I never it's, saw it either. Okay, like we everybody jokes about how bad a certain movie, no, but no, really, Too Little was so bad. Like I remember, me and Aaron Cummings went to go watch it, and the movie ended, and we just slowly turned our heads towards each other. It's like, what the fuck? Worse was than that? Zookeeper. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, Zookeeper. I mean, Zookeeper was bad, but it has its moments. Doolittle had no moments. I mean, it's just awful. It's so bad. All right, what's next? All right. Uh, was well, Zookeeper is Kevin James? Kevin James, Kevin yeah. James. <laughs> Ray and I saw it at the first cinema oh, you con saw we ever went to. You saw That's it. right, you fell asleep. Yeah, I fell asleep yeah. and you said, leave. Get out of here. <laughs> and I All said, right. okay, no problem. <laughs> Suthius writes, uh, have not had a chance to take my son to our usual Saturday movie outing for Guardians of the Galaxy 3. Finally taking him this Saturday, but it'll be on a dinky screen. That's still worth it. You know what? It's the even the dinkiest of movie theater screens is ten times better than whatever you got at home. Now listen, I say that as somebody who has I have a hundred and fifty inch short throw laser projector <laughs> at home with a, a Sonos surround system. Thank you to my friends who got that for me for half price, yeah. um, and thank you to uh, High Sense for giving me the projector for free. Um, but but it's still shit compared to a movie theater movie theaters look you can you can have all these people oh no see my home theater no it's not be real your home thing is dog shit compared to a real movie theater um a real movie theater is just better in every single sense of the word and, and now you can have a great home theater system i like my home theater a lot but give me a movie in a real movie theater with not 
a screen that's measured in inches, but a screen that is measured in meters. Dang. In in a, in with a sound system that truly doesn't surround me five feet there, five feet there, but. 30 feet there, 30 feet there with the rooms that rumbles. And I'm in a room with a hundred other movie fans gasping and cheering. And yeah, yeah, it's just, yeah, man, that's just way better. All right. <laughs> At Let's least I let, could find a way to let us know what you th thought about Guardians. I always love hearing opinions on that movie. It's, I, it's I love really Guardians. Great. It's fantastic. All right. What's next? Romy Rome 00 writes for the $20 super chat. Thank, thank you, very you much. Romy Rome. Um, <laughs> hey, John and crew. I went to an advanced screening of The Flash and I agree with you about the cameo. Only me and about three of the people in a packed theater cheered and clapped. No one else knew what the hell was going on. I mean, it's, it's true. The cam you, you all, when you go, when it happens, yeah. and it's, it's late. It's not in the post credit scenes or anything. It's like, but it is late in the third act. It's late in the third act, and you'll be able to tell. Now that you know it's coming, you'll be able to tell as it's approaching. You'll be able to feel it. You'll be able to, and when it's about to happen, look around a little bit to see how many confused faces there are around you, because you are going to see some confused people going, "Wait, why is that there?" Like you'll. The, you could totally be able to that's, tell. That's sort of why I think they released it because they they knew like people weren't going to quite get it, but now it gives people time to talk about it, research it, yep. and then when it happens, it's like you can be the smart guy in your group, like oh well, see this is what it was, even yeah, though you just this learned is about what it meant, even though you just learned about it. Yep, and uh, um, it's uh it's one hour. Are we are we through all the oh, questions? We're, we're done. We're that's done. It. Perfect timing because we are at the one hour mark, guys. Thank you so much. For joining us for today's installment of Open Mic, big special thank you to those of you guys who sent in questions, either via our tip link, thank you so much for that, or via Super Chat if you're here live, thank you. Because number one, you gave us great fun things to talk about, but number two, you supported our channel as you did it, and all of us involved with the show, thank you guys so much for your support. Don't forget, guys, you can continue to send in questions via our tip link. Also, guys, want to let you guys just see if you can get this graphic here ready for the Mint Mobile thing, but... Um, if, in case you guys don't know, we every day take one or two questions from our Mint Mobile hotline. If you guys have a question you'd like to hear us do a video on, on uh, the channel, or maybe we're even going to incorporate them now into the podcast, go ahead and call our Mint Mobile hotline anytime, 24-7, at 951-268-4259, and we'll pick one or two questions every day to use on the channel and in the podcast. So we hope you guys will take advantage of that. And also, guys, don't forget, look on your favorite podcasting app of choice, whether it's Spotify, Apple Podcasts or any other one that you use and subscribe to the John Campion Show podcast. Our show is now primarily a podcast and the best way to experience it, you can watch it on the YouTube channel, We, or at least listen to it on the YouTube channel. We do put it up there, but the better listening experience is through your podcasting app. So make sure you go and subscribe to that today. So guys, for Ray Aura, Jonathan Voico, myself, John Campia, thanks a lot for being here, guys. We'll see you tomorrow and until then, my friends, bye-bye.